Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to be finishing up uh, what we talked about last time with harmonic bundles. In particular, we'll be doing lemma 4. And um, I think that I'm only going to just do this lemma in this video because it's quite involved and uh, it doesn't really fit in with the next topic, so this will just be a standalone video. It was supposed to be in the last video, but I think I ran out of time, so... Anyway, we have... We start with this triangle. Uh, and... We have... Okay, so X, A, and Y. X, A, Y, and B are on a line in that order. Then... C is a point not on that line. What we want to do in this lemma is show that uh, it, it's it's a very strange um, condition. Essentially, we have uh, four or th three conditions. So one condition. So that angle XCY is equal to 90 degrees. Condition 2 is that CY bisects the angle ACB. And the third condition is that A, B, cross X, Y is once again negative one. So we have a harmonic bundle. Now our lemma states that if we take any two of these conditions to be true, then the third one must be true as well. But it doesn't matter which two we take. So we could take two and three, those would employ those would imply one, or we could take one and three, and those would imply two, so on. Now, such a limo would require, you know, three cases. But what we can do is use project use projection to rewrite the three conditions so that the limo becomes more obvious, and that's what we'll do. So that's why I have this additional line here. So what we do is we project through C onto a line that's parallel to CX. And it passes through Y. So this line here is by definition parallel to CX. And by definition, it passes through Y. So obviously Y gets mapped to itself. A and B get mapped points A prime and B prime here. And since this line is parallel to CX, X would get mapped to a point at infinity. In particular, the point at infinity which these two lines intersect at. So if X, if this angle XCY is equal to 90 degrees, then since this line, these two lines are parallel, that means that this angle would also be 90 degrees. So I'll write this in this blue. We can rewrite condition one as the condition um, C angle C Y B prime is equal to 90 degrees. Another way we could phrase that is that CY is an altitude of the triangle um, C A prime B prime. But we're going to run into, or I'll call it A prime, B prime, C prime. But we're going to use 
uh, this triangle a lot, so I'm just going to call it, or I'm just going to abbreviate it by a triangle sign. So CY is an altitude of the triangle. That's how we rewrite the first condition. The second condition, if CY bisects angle ACB, well, angle ACB is the same thing as angle A prime C B prime. So we can rewrite the second condition as CY bisects angle A prime C B prime. So CY bisects angle A prime C B prime. And again, this just means that CY is an angle bisector. of our triangle. Now the third condition. If we have a harmonic bundle, A, B, X, Y, well we know that since harmonic bundles are preserved under projection, that we have a new harmonic bundle, A prime, B prime, cross infinity y. Now by lemma 1 from the previous video, we noted that this means that y is a midpoint of a prime b prime. And in particular, that means that CY is a median So using this projection, we were able to rewrite all three conditions in terms of uh, CY being some special line of our triangle. And these lines coincide when we have isosceles triangles. So we know that, in particular, if, if two of these conditions are true, so if CY is in both an altitude and an angle bisector, that means that the our triangle is isosceles and we would have that cy is also a median because in an isosceles triangle these these special lines so to say the angle bisectors altitudes and medians they coincide and all we need is that two of them are equal for the third one to also be equal Another way to phrase this, um, we could see that if it's an altitude and an angle bisector, then we have you know, similar triangles. And therefore, uh, since this line is equal to itself, then we would have congruent triangles or any way around. Essentially, these, any two of these conditions prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other and the third one would follow from that congruence. So this is our so-called lemma 4 and in the next in the next few videos we will be applying these lemmas to different problems and uh, new new definitions.